Welcome back to our uh, engagement uh, marriage coaching uh, program. This is our second session. And in our first session, we give an introduction and biblical foundation for a sacred marriage. And in our second session today, we are going to be talking about falling in love for all the right reasons. There are lots of myths about what love is, and sometimes we base our decisions based on number of those misses and sometimes it doesn't work or even cause a disaster because falling in love is not always rational. You have to ask yourself some very important questions before making the lifelong commitment. What we have in America now is only 25% of first marriages endure and are happy. About half of the divorces take place within two to three years of the wedding day. About 75% of all persons in our society have experienced divorce in their family. The big challenge that faces young adults is to fall in love for the right reasons so that marriages would get healthier and healthier over time. When we look at uh, the trouble marriages that we deal with on daily basis and we go back to history, most of the time we find that the marriage was troubled from day one. Almost always the real reason was falling in love for the wrong reasons. We have to understand and use the selection area of marriage properly in order for us to have more successful marriages. We have to recognize the rules of healthy selection. First step you need to know or to do is doing a careful analysis to get to know yourself, your opinions, your attitudes, and uh, what you like and what you dislike. There are five exercises that I will recommend for you today. One of those exercises is to answer about 20 questions. Don't worry, they are not hard questions that will give you some understanding about yourself. One question would be, what makes you angry most? Another one would be, what bores you most? Still another one, who is the most powerful person in your life? Another exercise would be, Growing up, what are the things that you were able to find about yourself in every stage of your growing? And how did those findings change the older you get? Another question would be, in addition to knowing yourself, what is it that you really want in a marriage partner? You need to identify what are the basic things for you that you must have in a life partner. We have in our minds always a list of must-haves and must-don't-have. A person who is spiritual or a person who is intelligent is this you must have and so on. The must-haves are very crucial in a marriage relationship. Another question you need to get your list of you can't stand. There are some qualities that you cannot stand and you need to get to know those things very well. Let me tell you another th thing you need to know about uh, the person you are considering getting married to. As much as you can, as early as you can. This is the most important relation in your life next to your relationship with God. This is the one person you are going to have breakfast with, you're going to make your decisions together, you're going to have children with, and so on. You have to make sure that this is the right person for you. You need to become a great 
listener, which is not very hard, but you have to have courage to do it. You have to practice listening by spending time listening to what interests the other person, even if it doesn't interest you. And meanwhile, you put your opinion on hold, on the back burner, while you are fully listening. You will have much less of broken hearts if you identify your must-haves and those that you can't stand. And you are able to actively listen. One other thing that uh, you need to think about is your own emotional health, which is the most important thing that two people need to have in order to be married successfully. For those who have emotional health problems, it is better not to get involved until they take care of their own problems. Self-conception is so important in your emotional health and it has to start with your personal relationship with God. When you have positive self-conception, you might still have some ups and downs, but you will not have long-lasting downs that could affect your marriage significantly. Any kind of addiction or any kind of neurosis, if not dealt with, like depression, it could destroy the marriage relationship. And the bottom line is, in order to find a person that you fall in love with for all the right reasons, you have to get emotionally healthy as a priority. There are many dimensions that couples need to match in order to have healthy marriage. Spirituality is a very important dimension that would bring a couple together or it could create a challenge in the relationship. Another dimension that is important is intelligence. The couple has to be close to each other to have good understanding and uh, communication. Now take energy as another dimension to have a good match, also ambition and values in life, like giving and uh, saving uh, also having common interests and also money issues is an important dimension. Also neatness, cleanness, being uh, on time and uh, uh, different kinds of entertainment, what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy in entertainment. Definitely some of those dimensions are not as important by themselves. But putting them together could be very significant. Now I need to tell you a little bit about saving marriage before it starts. Uh, that is why I call this program pre-engagement premarital coaching. There are seven questions that we need to consider before a couple get married. We'll take a break now and we'll come back soon. question is, have you faced the myth of marriage with honesty? It is so important that our belief about marriage impact our behavior. One of the myths we have is that we don't realize that each one of us lives with different list of unspoken rules. Like who takes out the trash? Who does grocery shopping? Uh, who pays the bills, and so on. Also, another rule is what we call unconscious role expectations. It is mostly related to the family we grew up in and states what a husband or a wife should look like or talk like. And more often than not, those does not match reality. Another myth is Everything good in our relationship gets better and better after marriage. It is true that a lot of things get better, but not everything. Number three myth is everything bad about my life will now disappear since I am married. Of course, that is not 
true. Marriage does not mag magically make everything bad disappear. We bring ourselves into the relationship. The fourth myth would be, and the most important one, that I would like to bring up today, my spouse should make my, my life whole. My spouse should complete me. It is like shortcut for a person to his or her own wholeness. We forget that no human being can bring up this deep personal wholeness that comes only from the personal relationship with Christ. There is a very important sentence that I need to read to you at this point. If you try to build intimacy with another person before you have done the hard work of getting whole on your own, all your relationship becomes an attempt to complete yourself and they will fall dismally flat. Nobody can do that for you. You need to get yourself healthy before you get yourself married. A second big question is this. Can you identify your love style? After lots of research about love, the scholars came up with the triangular history of love. You can basically boil love down to three essential ingredients. The first of these is passion. It is the biological side of love. On the other side of the triangle, we put the word intimacy. It is the emotional side of love. On the base of the triangle, there is another important ingredient. We simply put commitment. That is the part of love that is not biological and not emotional, but it is the part of love that is a decision. It is the willful part of love. With any couples that are considering marriage, I would ask them, do you have any of those ingredients on a scale out of 10? You have to remember that love is very fluid. It is not a static condition or something that you fall in and fall out of. It is a fact that you don't expect your love life to be at 10 out of 10 all the time. Another very important question I would like you to ask yourself. Have you developed the habit of happiness? This is a question that could make or break a marriage. It's not a fantasy or uh, uh, a Pollyanna state. It is not putting a smile on your face and uh, pretending to be happy and it is truly happy. Even though you have and you are dealing with challenges of uh, uh, life, every marriage starts good, but every marriage will fact later on challenges. So the attitude the couple deal with those challenges makes a whole lot of difference. It is the attitude or habit of happiness. And at this point, I would like to tell you a statement that I love and enjoy very much. I would like to be happy, not because, but even though. Even though there are challenges and problems, I'm still having happiness. And that's the kind of happiness that's coming from within that's coming from God inside me. Another question is, can you say what you mean and understand what you hear? This is an important one. As years down the road, it becomes one of the important complaints that most couples have. It is lack of communication. The first step above all is genuineness in the relationship from your heart. Also, there has to be sense of acceptance, having furnished this foundation of genuineness and acceptance, then we can get to the fundamental skills for communication. First, we have to clarify the content. It is so easy to misinterpret, but clarifying does not stand alone. We have to join it 
with the ability to reflect the feelings as well. Another question would be, have you bridged the gender gap? We know that men and women are different. They are different in needs and desires and actually even in communication styles. If you ask a woman, what is the goal of a good conversation? The answer would be to build relationship, to build support and to connect feelings. With most men, when they get in a conversation, they are most about information exchange. Also, another gender difference would be for women, the need to be cherished, while another need for men is the need for shared activities, like doing things together, going places together. Also, men need to be admired, while women need to be desired. Another question I would like to uh, ask, do you know how to fight a good fight? I would like to ask you, what do you think other couples fight about? While money and finances is the most common, but there are other things that couples fight about. I would like to say here that if you know how to fight a good fight, conflicts can bring couples closer together and help them better understand each other. There are four things that need to be avoided to fight a good fight. Those four things, is, things are, number one, criticism. Always on the attack and blaming using you always do or you always don't. Number two, defensiveness, which could be a response to criticism and almost always escalates marital problems and never bring a resolve. Number three is contempt, usually sarcastic, making fun of the other person. And number four, stone walling and how it creates a barrier in a relationship. You know, the uh, silent uh, language, uh, the expressionless face, those are all stone walling or giving your back to the other person. A final question would be, are you and your partner soulmates? Spiritual intimacy between couples is so important for a successful marriage. Most of the time, when you ask a couple about how important on a scale from zero to 10, spiritual intimacy, what do you expect the response is important for you? It, it, it goes up to eight to 10. While if you ask them, how satisfied with the level of your spiritual intimacy, it would go down to three to four. The couples who want to build their spiritual intimacy, they find shared services very beneficial in cultivating their intimacy. Also praying is very helpful in building spiritual intimacy, studying the scriptures and uh, learning to worship together adds a lot to growing in spiritual intimacy. This concludes our uh, session today. Until next session, may God bless you all. Thank you.